What's going on everyone, Bobby Max here and welcome back to my Crystal Palace save here on FM24. This is a rebuild save but it is with English only players and English only staff. We have played two seasons already, we have a full complement of English contingent, uh, albeit there is a guy here uh, from Trinidad and Tobago who has come up through the youths. But we are waiting on whether he's going to announce himself for England or Trinidad and Tobago. Uh, looks pretty good. think he could develop into a good left back, good first team squad member for this team. Uh, but obviously if he declares for Trinidad and Tobago, we will have to sell him on. Um, but other than that, it's a full English contingent. We finished second in the Premier League, which was extremely good. Unexpected. Lost nine games, but still finished second, uh, as you all remember from the last episode. Uh, so this is right where we left off. And we obviously lost in the Europa Conference League final against AC Milan. Next season, we are going to be in the Champions League, though. So that is going to be an interesting journey for us to try and go on with this team as well. So what I'm going to do now is jump forward to the end of the summer transfer window and we'll have a look at what business we've been able to do between now and So before the season ticked over we brought two players in, in Charlie Patino and Callum Doyle. Uh, spent a bit of money, 69 million on the pair of them, but they're both first team squad members that will hopefully give us the depth that we need. Uh, when some of his key players are missing. But yeah, really pleased to bring these two in. I think they're certainly going to help what we need to do. In terms of transfers out, uh, we managed to sell a um, couple of players. Ryan Sessegnon went to Brentford for 10.25 million. We brought him on a free last season, but he's not really played much. So we thought I thought we'd make a profit on him. And then John Kimani Gordon has left to go to Portsmouth for 675000 We've loaned out David Azo as well again for the upcoming season. So as the season transferred over to 25-26, brought a few more players in. Uh, Charlie Setford, £6.5 million. Pound. He's a goalkeeper uh, who is English playing out at Ajax. I think his younger brother's out there too as well. I can't remember his name. Uh, Shea Lacey we brought in for £30 million. He's a right winger. Um, came up through the Man United Academy looks like he's going to be a bit of a wonder kid on FM24 so we brought him in as well and then we've brought Jason Blue Forest in if you know you know uh, he was a freebie from Manchester United as well looks pretty good in the stats obviously English uh, left footer knew both feet actually um, and should be a decent squad member for us in terms of outs then, we let around about £38 million worth of people go. Uh, predominantly that was Mason Holgate for £4.1 million. Uh, we also let Sam Johnston go, 1.6. In fact, I'll sort this by value so you can see. Uh, Sam Johnston went for £1.6 million. Uh, Jesserin Rakasaki has gone to Zaragoza for up to £1.2 million. Uh, Killian Phillips, David Abu. Uh, Asher, Agibone, uh, just all reserve players really. Uh, the notable ones were the top two, which is Tommy Doyle. I've gone to West Ham, 40 million. Wasn't really playing in my team, to be honest. Uh, so we've let him go. We brought Charlie Patino in, which I think is an upgrade. So yeah, we let Tommy Doyle go. And Joe Geldar has gone for up to 20.5 million to Fulham. It got in to lose Joe Geldar, actually. I think he was a little bit underrated for us. I thought he did really well. Um, and I'm not sure whether he'll turn out like that in real life. Um, but yeah, I mean, he only got two in 19 last season, but I think those 19 appearances were predominantly off the bench. Ivan Tony was the regular starter. And, uh, but that first season that he was with us where he, you know, he got, not, 12's not a lot, but he did all right for us. Um, you know, he was a, a decent English striker. Uh, and we've made six million on him, so yeah, I'm I'm pleased with what we got out of him. And so yeah, um, this is the squad now. Then, uh, so Dwight Williams still hasn't declared for either nation, so he's still here for the time being, because uh, there is potential there that he will go English. We'll have to wait and see on that. 
Um, but other than that, uh, Avi Araujo is there as the starting left back now. We've got Cal Walker Peters, Tivo Livermento. Defence is starting to become uh, a decent area. We've got Gahey, Callum Doyle, Rob Holding. Um, it's probably another centre back that we need to try and sign. But yeah, we've got three very good centre backs there, and Araujo can play there if we need him to as well. Uh, in terms of goalkeepers, Henderson's still his first choice, but we've obviously got Setford there now as well, uh, as well as Akonku and Whitworth, and Setford's coming to replace Sam Johnston, <coughs> who's moved on. Uh, a couple of players coming up through the youths in Amadi and Littler look pretty good. Uh, hopefully they can go out on loan this season and develop into uh, first-team squad members. Uh, as midfield is very, very good. Uh, Dewsbury Hall, Scott, Patino, Wharton, Gray, all very good players. Um, and then we've got decent wing options now as well. Uh, Harvey Barnes, Marcus Edwards, Dwight McNeil, Caden Young. Uh, Shea Lace is here as well now, obviously, but we'll probably be playing in the 21s if not going out on loan. Uh, Jason Blue Forest, Amari Kellerman, um, and Ivan Tony is hiding there at the bottom, our star striker. So. Yeah, I'm pleased with the squad that we've got. I don't think we'll finish second again, but it will be interesting to see how we do this season, particularly with Champions League football as well. So let's go see how we got on. Our Premier League campaign didn't get off to the best of starts, being drawn away at Arsenal and Gabriel Jesus, giving them a lead with a fantastic strike on just 13 minutes. And 25 minutes later, Bukayo Saka was set off down the right and he was able to cut in and make it 2-0, doubling Arsenal leads on just 38 minutes. But it looked like we had an opportunity to get back into the game just a minute later. Ivan Tony was our top goal scorer last season and he got off to a flying start this season with his name on the score sheet after just 39 minutes. There was no reply all game and Bukayo Saka made it 3-1 with a penalty in the 91st minute, which meant all hope of a comeback was gone. The second match of the campaign was at home to Manchester City, and when Rico Lewis fouled Dwight McNeil quite professionally, he was dismissed from the field and we were against a 10-man Manchester City team. It didn't stop them though, and the score was still 0-0 come the 62nd minute, and even with 10 men, Manchester City were a fine side, and Rodrigo gave them the lead which meant we had a bit of a mountain to climb to try and get back into this. I'm sure you're going to hear me say this a lot whilst he's playing for Crystal Palace, but Ivan Tony is our big man for big moments, and if anyone's going to get the equaliser, it would be him. It didn't come well the 86th minute, and as a consequence, we only picked up one point playing against 10 man Manchester City. And we could only pick up a point away at Fulham, who had 22 shots against us. Our first win of the season though came against Everton when Dwight McNeil and Ivan Tony both banged a brace each. But an away trip to Brentford cost us three points when Luis Suarez, not the one we all know and love, and Brian Umbueno scored to give Brentford all three points. We were drawn against Newcastle in the third round of the League Cup with a home tie and Alex Scott gave us the lead after 28 minutes. And there wasn't much action then until the 80th minute when uh, Jason Blue Forest's Rabona found Ivan Tony. And the man, the legend, made it 2 0. Things weren't great in the fourth round though, when we could only hold Manchester City for a draw yet again for the second time in the season. However, this time the game went to penalties and they progressed through to the next round at our expense. Our first ever Champions League game was a home tie against Sparta Prague, a team that we should feel fairly comfortable about beating. However, it took while the 26th minute, but some nice footwork and passing from the team for Archie Gray to volley home and give us the lead. And on 29 minutes, we were given a penalty, with Ivan Tony stepping up and making it 2 0. And on the 71st minute, Mark Gahey rose above everybody with a powerful header into the top corner, giving us a 3-0 lead. We scored our fourth and final goal in the 76th minute when some neat footwork from Harvey Barnes down the left gave himself some space with a fine finish into the bottom corner. 
And our first ever away game ended 6-2 in Feyenoord. Things weren't going particularly well in the Premier League though, as we suffered another defeat this time at the hands of Tottenham Hotspur, with Ebery Etze, our former player, getting the man of the match. Next up was a home tie against Manchester United, and when Archie Gray got the ball in the box and was brought down, we had the chance to make it 1-0 after just two minutes. In the absence of Ivan Tony, Marcus Edwards stepped up and found the back of the net. And in the 63rd minute, Marcus Edwards' through ball was met with Dewsbury Hall's run, and his powerful left foot strike was no match for Bayandai. United did get a goal back through Bruno Fernandes and it was getting a bit hairy towards the end, but former Man United player Jason Blue Forest blasted home in the 95th minute and sealed all three points for us. He also picked up the man of the match and was an able deputy in the absence of Ivan Tony. But an away defeat to Chelsea, followed by a home defeat to Liverpool, started casting doubts over whether we'd finish in the top four again. Things started to drop off in the Champions League as well when we were held to a 0-0 draw at home to Atletico Madrid. And we could only get a draw away in Salzburg and in Eindhoven. And despite the defeat to Liverpool on the first of the month, November actually turned out to be a pretty positive month for the team. An away trip to West Ham started off really well and we took the lead after just 13 minutes. Talisman Archie Gray finding the back of the net. And we managed to keep a clean sheet and add a second when Ivan Tony found the back of the net past Ariola with a fantastic left foot low drive into the bottom corner. We then beat Aston Villa 1-0 and finished the month off with an emphatic 5-2 victory over Watford and a hat-trick for Alex Scott. And December was our best month of the season and it started with an away trip at Brighton. Unfortunately, Brighton took the lead very early in the game after just two minutes. However, 12 minutes later, we got our first response when Ivan Tony blasted it in from 16 yards out, making it 1-1. Brighton were back in the lead with a similar goal to the first one, but this time it was Lewis Dunk heading home from a Pascal Gross corner. And although we were losing 2-1 at the break, we managed to score four second-half goals, the first one coming from Alex Scott. And the second one coming from an Ivan Tony penalty, and this man doesn't make many mistakes from the spot. And on 79 minutes, Archie Gray was there again. Talisman scored the third goal of the second half and our fourth of the game. And the fifth goal came in stoppage time, Marcus Edwards getting through on goal and blasting it past Steele, the score finishing 5-2. A 3-0 home victory against Southampton followed and a 1-1 draw away at St James's Park against Newcastle were the only points that we dropped in December. Wins against Everton, Leeds, Nottingham Forest and Bournemouth closed out a fantastic end to 2025. And the icing on the cake was a 96-minute winner against Eintracht Frankfurt to give us three points in the Champions League for the first time in a few games. So yeah, we're doing all right. We're fourth in the table, seven points behind the leaders, um, but we are pretty close to second and third. City and Arsenal are slightly above us. Liverpool and Tottenham are hot on our heels, uh, and Brentford are the best of the rest. Uh, Ivan Tony's scored 11 Premier League goals. He's only second to Haaland, which is pretty good. Um, we've just lost 3-2 to Manchester City, as you can see there. So. That's widened the gap to four points there. And these people have games and hands on us as well. So I think if I can maintain a top four, I'll be really pleased. And that isn't kind of what I was looking for at this stage of this save. Um, I kind of expected in my head that we'd kind of be mid-table first season, then look at Conference League second season, Europa League third season. Uh, and after three seasons, we hopefully would have a squad strong enough to try and break into that top four from season four onwards but we, we we're really ahead of schedule uh, to be perfectly honest and i think if we can finish top four again after finishing second last season finishing top four again i think will be a great achievement for us a lot of us players are wanted now and this is where the difficulty is going to come in holding on to some of these players like arsenal want adam wharton i really don't want to let him go he's been absolutely brilliant for us i think palace have signed him in real life haven't they um, but yeah, he's been he's been absolutely fabulous for us 
Uh, Alex Scott's been great. Dewsbury Hall's been great. He's wanted as well by Arsenal. Um, so yeah, so these players, centre midfield in particular, Gray, Wart and Scott are players I definitely do not want to let go. Uh, Dewsbury Hall and Patino have been kind of the backups to them, but midfield players tend to get tired quite frequently, so we need the strength and depth here to be able to continue to compete. Um, and the wing areas are, are pretty good as well, but all of them are wanted. Harvey Barnes is wanted by a host of players. Uh, Dwight McNeil is getting interest from Saudi Arabia. Uh, Caden Young's got a, a loan bid in for him. Um, Marcus Edwards again, Saudi Arabia interested in him. And they've not, you know, they're not having the best of seasons in terms of goal productivity. And if you remember last season, like Ivan Tony and Dwight McNeil paired up really well <coughs> in a lot of the, in a lot of the games, but this season's been a bit subdued. I would say compared to last season from them, but yeah, it's um, it's going okay. It's just whether we've got the availability to do anything in the January transfer window is going to be difficult. We have no money, seventy-six million in debt, projecting that that's going to get massively worse, <clears throat> which is obviously going to impact on what we can do. And this is why. It worries me when some of the best players have got interest in them as to whether we're going to be able to hang on to them or not. But this is, you know, this is what it is. We've been uh, Crystal Palace rather than Arsenal. So, yeah, let's um, jump forward to the end of the January transfer window. We'll have a look if we've been able to do anything in terms of incomings or out. Well, we were able to do a bit, and I'll start with the sales, really, because obviously we needed to generate money in order to spend it, and this was the biggest sale that we made, um, which was Dewsbury Hall going to Arsenal. I showed you earlier that they were interested in him, and it was a bit gutting to let him go, because, like I said, we kind of needed that strength in depth, but I needed the money, really. The £35 million would go a long way to helping. Aidan Young, as uh, you know, we signed him recently. We've not had him that long uh, for 7.75 million, but he's only made three appearances and he's not done particularly well in those appearances. The fact I were able to even get my money back, you know, I have made a little bit of profit on him, but the fact that we were able to get his money back for him, I think, was, um, was good business. <clears throat> so, what have we done in terms of transfers? Well, you know, these are kind of staggered over monthly payments, which isn't going to help with the forecast of the debt, but. Mikey Moore is a player that I really like on this game. So I've signed him, 30 million, potentially rising to 36. Cole Palmer is a good player in real life. Can he do the business for us? We've had him on loan in the past at Palace, and he did really well for us. Um, five goal contributions in 15 games. Uh, so we brought him in for 10 million. And uh, we brought another goalkeeper in, James Trafford, 3 million there from Burnley, who we've loaned straight back out. Um, I'm relying a lot on some of these youngsters that have come through the academy to develop into first team players because otherwise we're going to end up selling on some of these stars and not being able to replace them. Uh, Harvey Barnes is probably the next person that's going to leave. Lark's going to have to wait while the summer. He's desperate to move on. And I don't really know why. I don't know what his, his gripe is, really. You know, he's, he's playing games, albeit not as many as some of the other first team squad members, but playing a lot of games, he's paid decent money, um, but his contract's up in two years and he, he, he won't renew it, so... Um, his main gripe... Um, <laughs> okay. You know, it's, it's about the squad depth with the goalkeeper, and this is, annoys me, really, because... You know, that's one of the reasons why I went out and bought Charlie Setford and James Trafford because Mark Gahey is complaining we don't have the uh, squad depth in the goalkeeping area, but I feel like we do. Um, we've got Dean Anderson, we've got Charlie Setford, and now we've got James Trafford. We've got good goalkeepers. And there's not a lot of good English goalkeepers. I can't go buy Aaron Ramsdale. Pickford I might be able to get if his value comes down a bit, but... Is he any better than Henderson? Am I going to be paying somebody 150 grand, 200 grand a week just to get on the bench? No. Um, 
So whether there's a, I know there's um, Spike Brits is a good young English goalkeeper as well in the game, but he's Man City, so whether they're going to let him go is another thing. But yeah, I'm, I'm not, I can't do anything about it. They're just kicking off. That there's not the the depth there, but I f I feel like there is. I mean, even this kid, you know, he's stats, his attributes have dropped a little from the point, but you know, it's third choice, and he'll do a job for us. So, anyway, um, it is what it is. Let's go see how the second half of the season went, and then I'll join you at. January was a bit of hit and miss and it didn't get off to the greatest of starts when we suffered a 3-2 defeat at Manchester City with all their goals coming in the first half. However, a 2-0 win over Stoke in the third round of the FA Cup sent us through to the fourth round, despite them having 23 shots. We hoped for revenge against Arsenal after our opening game defeat at the start of the campaign and on 26 minutes, Adam Wharton didn't disappoint and he scored the only goal of the match, giving us all three points. Up next was a home game against Fulham. After 10 minutes, Tino Livermento opened the scoring with a low drive into the bottom corner from distance. And on 54 minutes, Ivan Tony was there again to turn in a deflected shot from Adam Wharton. Despite VAR intervention, the goal stood and we were 2 0 up. But in stoppage time, Jay Stansfield managed to grab one back for Fulham. But literally a minute later, and with the last kick of the game, the poor soul was sent off for a second bookable challenge after a foul on Dwight McNeil. Our hardest game in the Champions League league phase ended in defeat when we travelled to Munich and lost 3-1, Harry Kane scoring two. Torquay gave us a pass through to the next round of the FA Cup, and the league phase of the Champions League ended with a 1-1 draw at home to Napoli. The league phase finished and we'd drawn more games than we'd won, but that only defeat at way at Munich was something to be proud of. And we were through, albeit in the playoff stage, but we were in the next round of the Champions League. And we finished January off with a 2-2 home draw against Brentford. February wasn't a particularly good month when we travelled to Wolves, who took the lead after just 34 minutes. And it took while well, the 87th minute for us to get the equaliser. Ivan Tony again, the big man for the big moments. And we could only draw at home against Tottenham Hotspur. And Manchester United gave us a stark reminder as to why they're one of the best teams in this particular save. Shakhtar were our opponents in the playoff round of the Champions League. And in the first leg, we were away from home, and managed to get an important 2 2 result despite having 19 shots. Shakhtar completely frustrated us at home, and after 90 minutes the score was 0-0. It needed extra time, and an Amari Kellyman 110th minute goal to put us through the round of 16. Before that though, we had to entertain Chelsea at home, and after 8 minutes we were awarded a penalty. Ivan Tony, as I've said before, makes no mistake from the spot. Mark Gahey doubled his lead on the 22nd minute with a fine header for a free kick from Adam Wharton. And Ivan Tony was about to take his second penalty of the game just before the break. And again, made no mistake from the spot. The score remained 3-0 and it was a fantastic result against one of our London rivals. Liverpool gave us a thumping on the 7th of March, beating us 4-0 at Anfield. However, that defeat would be the last of the Premier League campaign, as in the remaining nine games, we picked up seven wins and two draws. It was a fairly favourable run-in, but we still picked up some big wins against big teams. We were drawn at home to Newcastle in the next round of the FA Cup, and forgotten man Cole Palmer scored a wonderful strike from the edge of the box, give us a 1-0 victory and progressing us through to the quarter-finals where we'd have a favourable tie against Norwich at home, winning 3-0 and moving on to the semi-finals of the FA Cup. We'd play Arsenal at Wembley in the semi-finals, and even though we'd beaten them at home and they'd beaten us at the Emirates, this one was a neutral ground, so it could have been anyone's game, and it literally was anyone's game. It took while well the 47th minute for a goal to be scored, but Abriel Jesus was the one that did, and that was the only goal of the game. We were eliminated. And Benfica were our opponents in the round of 16 of the Champions League. Ivan Tony got us off to a great start, 
after just 19 minutes. And halfway through the second half on 61 minutes, Adam Wharton turned and fired past Trubin to make it 2-0. But Benfica are a top European side with fantastic pedigree and experience. Shelder up fired a low drive past Henderson on 72 minutes to give them hope of a comeback. And just four minutes later, that opportunity of a comeback was realised when Cabral made it 2-2 after 76 minutes. But despite losing a two-goal lead, this side never gives up. And Alex Scott turned and fired in a third goal after just 78 minutes, and we were taking the lead back to Portugal. It was a difficult night out in Lisbon, but we held our own and kept Benfica to a 2-2 draw, meaning we went through to the quarter-finals 5-4 on aggregate. The Champions League wouldn't be any easier when we were drawn against French champions Paris Saint-Germain, but Adam Wharton, after just four minutes, gave us the lead. But a few minutes later, Mouane was played through and the scores were level. And Mouane is a bit of a beast from close range. He made it two on 80 minutes. And when you're playing against a team that consists of Kylian Mbappe, You've got to be very, very careful that you don't let him have a strike on goal. It was 3-1 just before the break, and we were facing a massive uphill task. We did get one goal back, though, in the 89th minute, when Alex Scott managed to drive it past Donnarumma. The score finished 3-2 in the home tie, and we now had to go to Paris. But it literally was game, set and match. They were just too dominant for us, too many world stars and we were just not up to the task at this level. We capitulated 3-0 and Paris Saint-Germain move on to the semi-finals and our season is effectively over. Well, we did creep into fourth place, didn't we? So we've qualified for the Champions League again, which is good. I'm pleased about that. So, yeah, the fact that we're going to be competing on the biggest stage again next season is great. Man City finishing in fifth is... Unbelievable. I'm surprised how good Man United are on this save. Um, and I've told you in the past how good Chelsea are on FM24. And they nearly got relegated. <laughs> Finished down in 16th. Which would have been incredible, wouldn't it? If they'd have got relegated, the players I could have robbed from them, Colwell, Shalabar, Rhys James, Chilwell, you know, I could have... Sterling, Adwake... I could have, I could have just gone all in if I'd have had the money to do it. But yeah, could have, um, could have done something there, couldn't I? And I still might be able to, given how low down they've finished, I might be able to go rob a player or two if uh, if the board give me the money to do it. But yeah, in terms of uh, average ratings, obviously a was top, but he didn't really play much. Similarly with Mustafa, uh, Amari Kellerman didn't really play much, but did all right when he came in uh, and did a job. Marcus Edwards, what a player! A player, 31 goal contributions in 45. Uh, interest in him is high, very high. Um, so whether we hang on to him or not in the summer is another thing. Henderson's great, and I don't need to improve the goalkeeper, the first choice goalkeeper, he's, he's brilliant. Adam Wharton's been a great servant for us since we bought him. Archie Gray again, Alex Scott. Those three midfielders, don't want them going anywhere. I need They're the players I need to hang on to. And I, I need the squad depth really though, because like I said earlier, do get tired um, and I need decent players to come in and do a job for us. Cole Palmer's done all right when he's come in and done a job. Charlie Patino come in and done a job in centre midfield would have needed him to as well. So, yeah. Um, Tony's 23 and 44 this season. Not his best output. Do we keep him? Do we move him on? Let's we'll see. So, yeah, I mean, in terms of the competitions that we're in, I think we've done really well. Beating Benfica in the round of 16 is kind of my claim to fame. As Crystal Palace manager, you know, we, we did really well there. I know we've uh, then drawn Paris Saint-Germain. It was always going to be a tough ask, and once we lost at home, I, I knew we weren't going to get through, so losing 3-0 away. Uh, and losing 1-0 to Arsenal in the semi-final. You know, we put up a decent fight. Uh, it was a close game, but... It, it, it is what it is. I think we're going in the right direction. I know we finished lower than what we did last season in the league, but I think that was just a bit of a fluke, really, getting into second place because the other teams hadn't really performed. But the fact we finished fourth, qualified for the Champions League again, I think is good. I'm pleased with the progress that we're making. 
in terms of the finances, I'm I'm not showing you it because I forgot to save it at the time, but we have had a takeover. So if you remember earlier in the season, I was showing you that the projection was uh, depressing, wasn't it? It looked like things were going to get absolutely terribly, terribly, terribly bad. But uh, Josh Gill has bought the club. Uh, Jordan Barraclough is now the managing director. And we've got some new directors. So um, Steve Parrish has gone and he's been replaced by somebody who's, you know, he's put decent money in. Uh, we've got an £80 million balance now and an £82 million transfer budget. So there's, there's some potential to do things that we need to do. Uh, and in terms of the projection, it looks like the club is on track to do some of the things um, financially that we need them to do, which is great. Uh, in terms of facilities, we've now got Exceptional Academy and Youth Recruitment. Uh, youth facilities and training facilities still need a bit of development, but we are getting there. Still not won anything, but we'll get there. I'm sure we'll get there. So, yeah, all in all, we were predicted to finish ninth, we finished fourth. We're overachieving. Fans love us, chairman loves us. We're on track. Well, that is it for season three. Thank you very much for joining us. I uh, hope you're enjoying this series and we'll see how season four goes with our English only challenge for the Crystal Palace rebuild. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Stay safe. Bye for now.